I am Dr. Sri Vidya, Professor Chemistry, Department of Chemistry, KSR College of Technology. The topic what I am going to take is external conditioning in water treatment. So, in the external treatment, we are going to use the method softening or conditioning methods. Water is mainly used for industrial purposes, which is, should be free from hardness producing salts, suspended impurities, dissolved gases, etc. The process of removing the hardness producing salts from the water is known as softening or conditioning. The softening of water can be usually done by two methods, external conditioning and internal conditioning. So we will see the external conditioning. So this external conditioning involves the removal of the hardness producing salts before the water is fed into the boiler. The external conditioning usually is done by two methods. First method is zeolite method. The second process is ion exchange process or it is also called as demineralization process. So first we will see zeolite process or permitted process. Zeolite is hydrated sodium alumino silicate. Its chemical formula is Na2O, Al2O3, X molecules of SiO2 and Y molecules of H2O. Natural zeolite is usually green in color, it is non-porous and therefore we are using synthetic form of the zeolite which is known as permutate which is porous in nature and gel like structure and therefore it is used for water softening. It is usually represented by Na2Ze. This sodium zeolite consists of loosely held sodium ions and therefore this loosely held sodium ions will be replaced by the calcium and magnesium ions of hard water. So what is the procedure involved in this method is the hard water is allowed to percolate through the sodium zeolite bed. The sodium ions which are loosely held in the bed are replaced by the calcium and the magnesium ions of the water and the product formed will be calcium and magnesium zeolites. The reactions which are taking place are given below. So this is the, uh, that is the process we are using for the conversion of the hard water into soft water. This consists of a bed which is written here zeolite bed and it is having an inlet and outlet. The inlet hard water is passed in and uh, through the outlet the soft water can be collected. So the various chemical reactions which is taking in the bed is given here. Sodium zeolite plus calcium bicarbonate which is present in the hard water gives calcium zeolite plus sodium bicarbonate. Sodium zeolite plus magnesium bicarbonate gives magnesium zeolite plus sodium bicarbonate. Sodium zeolite plus magnesium chloride gives magnesium zeolite and sodium chloride. Sodium zeolite plus calcium chloride gives calcium zeolite and sodium chloride. Sodium zeolite plus calcium sulfate gives calcium zeolite plus sodium sulfate. Sodium zeolite plus magnesium sulfate gives magnesium zeolite and sodium sulfate. So <coughs> this bed once it is exhausted it can be regenerated by using sodium chloride and the soft water after the process is over is collected which will contain large amount of sodium salts and uh, which cannot be used in the boilers. So the regeneration step we are using sodium chloride. What is the reaction involved in the regeneration is the calcium zeolite and the magnesium zeolite in the bed can be regenerated by adding sodium chloride. So calcium zeolite plus sodium chloride gives sodium zeolite plus calcium chloride. Magnesium zeolite plus sodium chloride will give sodium zeolite and magnesium chloride. So what are the advantages of this method is there is no sludge formation during this process and uh, water which is obtained outside will consist of very less hardness. Method is also very cheap and the permuted can be regenerated which can be used again and again and the operation procedure of this process is also very easy. Disadvantages of this method, this method cannot be used for turbid water and acidic water because if they are used they will destroy the bed and this method it is capable of replacing only the cations and anions will be still present in the water which is coming outside and the water suppose if it contains iron and manganese cannot be treated because the regeneration process will be very difficult and this method cannot also be used for softening brackish water because the exchange reaction will not occur. The disadvantages which is present in the method is overcome by the second process which is called as ion exchange process or it is called as demineralization process. In this process both the cations and anions of the hard water will be removed and this process is carried out by using ion exchange resins. These resins nature is it is a long chain cross linked 
insoluble polymers and which is having minute openings which we call it as porous structure. The resins also contain functional groups which are attached to them and these functional groups are responsible for the ion exchange properties. So the resins which are used here for the removal of cations and anions are classified into two types. First one is called as cation exchanger. This cation exchanger or the resins which are containing acidic functional groups COH carboxylic acid, sulfonic acid can also be given and these acidic functional groups are responsible for exchanging the H plus ions with the cations of the hard water. This cation exchange resins are generally represented as RH2. Examples that can be given for this is sulfonated coal and sulfonated polystyrene. The second one is anion exchanger. This contain basic functional groups like amino group and hydroxyl group and they are capable of exchanging the anions of the hard water. The anion exchange resin is usually represented as ROH twice. Example for this is urea formaldehyde and cross-linked quaternary ammonium salts. So what is the procedure involved in this process is? The process usually consists of two filters. The first water is allowed to pass through the first filter and the column is usually packed with cation exchange resins. In the cation exchange resins, the cations of the hard water, calcium and magnesium ions will be absorbed. What is the reaction which is taking place in the first column is RH2 plus CaCl2 gives RCA plus 2 HCl. RH2 plus MgSO4 gives RMg plus H2SO4. The water which is coming out of the first column which is free from the cations is allowed to pass through the second column which is called as anion exchange column which absorbs all the anions present in the water. The reactions taking place are ROH twice plus 2 HCl gives RCl2 plus 2 H2O, ROH twice plus H2SO4 gives RSO4 plus 2 H2O. The water which is coming out from the anion exchange column is completely free from the anions and this water is known as demineralized water or it is called as deionized water. So this is the picture which shows the removal of uh, the cations and anions. The first column will be packed with the cation exchange resin. The second column will be packed with the anion exchange resin. The water is allowed to pass through that is the, through the inlet which hard water is allowed to pass through and uh, through the second column through the outlet the water which is coming out is called as a soft water. In the first column cations will be removed and in the second column anions will be removed and the soft water which is coming out is totally free from both cations and anions. So after a particular stage the bed will be exhausted and we have to do the process called as regeneration. In the regeneration the cation exchange resin can be regenerated by passing dilute HCl or dilute H2SO4. What is the reaction is? The cat RCA plus 2 HCl gives RH2 plus CaCl2, RMG plus 2 HCl gives RH2 plus MgCl2. Similarly, if the anion exchange resin is exhausted, it can be regenerated by passing through a solution of dilute NaOH. RCl2 plus 2 NaOH gives ROH twice plus 2 NaCl. Advantages of this method, the water will be having a very low hardness. Highly acidic or alkaline water can also be treated by this process. What is the disadvantage is this equipment is little costly and expensive chemicals are needed for this process. Thank you.